we saw the clip obviously went out on social media. What was it like to give a guy five pucks after a game? That was fun. That was uh, it, it was a spur of the moment because uh, Chris Durkin handed me the five pucks, which I thought was incredible that the scorekeepers kept them after each goal, and uh, pr pretty pretty special to be able to do that um, at the highest level in the NHL, and to to know and watch how many hours. Uh, and obstacles Tej Thompson has put in and had to overcome uh, made it really, really special to be handing them to him and, and the whole group of guys. I, I, I said this morning to the group that as a coach, it's very enjoyable to see the rest of the team participate in each person's success. And they were unbelievably happy for Tej each goal as it progressed through that game last night and happy for him after the game and this morning and and that's that that says a lot especially at this level where it's a where it's a business that you're that happy for your teammate and you can share in that uh that joy together and uh, as a coach that's uh pretty neat in baseball when a guy throws a no hitter everybody asks him well how did you feel in the bullpen did you sense it was a different day i mean maybe you don't sense that during the day in hockey but as that game started real early did you just get a Well, I knew Columbus was was coming off a of back to back in a depleted roster on the back end, and that's tough. We all know that. We've been through that, and it's this league is getting tougher and tougher as salary cap era is is more into it. You know, 15 years in, there's less room every year for free agents. There's less. There's more money spent and less flexibility for teams, and and you start to see the greater impact of injuries on each roster because of that. And, you know, we went through it uh, during our eight-game stretch. We went through it for a couple of months last year where we were leading the league in injuries, man games missed. And it is no fun. Uh, and you get rated and judged about how bad you are at this and bad you are at that. And in reality, it's, it's hard to rate all these teams around the league until they're healthy. And so we knew going in last night they, they were banged up. Um, and, and a little bit down, and then we just hit a rhythm. They got in some penalty trouble. Our power play has been clicking pretty good. Um, and then, obviously, Tomer's been clicking pretty good. Uh, so was Dylan. Dylan scored the first goal, and then Tomer the next couple on the power play. So, yeah, I think everything lined up uh, for that occurrence. Don, Tage has made no secret that you know, the confidence of, of, of the faith of the team and your, you have placed in them. When you've made this... Uh, the switch had him switch the center. Could you have envisioned that he would have blossomed to this extent? Yes, because I have other players that I'd coached in this league doing similar. And, and so, so you, you, so I've seen him with elite players in our league at the age of 16, 17, 18 that were doing what he's doing now. And you, so that's the comparable. I've been on the ice with, with players like that. And so you, so you have the hindsight that Rotation is every bit as talented as this guy and that guy and that guy. So, and you see the way he's working, that you know he, the potential is there. Now what can we do on our side to help him? Because he's putting the work in and his talent is, is, is seen. So. Yes, I, I don't. If someone asked, asked me last night, I think Paul did. Am, am I surprised? No, I'm not surprised at all. He's very talented and he puts the work in. When you got here, having known him, could you have been, I, I mean, what, what did you see in that player knowing that he was going through some tough times? And how, how low did he get and did it concern you? Uh, it Well, it always concerns you when a player is you know, hungry for more and committed for more and they don't yet have it. Um, one reporter asked me last week, they were doing a story on Tage and they said, um, when Tage was down, I said, Tage was never down. He was, some guys get down and they never come up and they dwell. Tage was never not battling and scrapping and fighting 
before he got in the lineup, when he was had to play games in the American League, whatever it was, he's never down, <laughs> and that's a big difference. That's a whole trait of difference. Um, he was battling. He was he was recomm- he was committing more. He was uh, finding ways to add to his game to make his game better. So, you know, all the drama we want to put into it and say hardship. Uh, the guy was behind the scenes doing all the right things. He just needed opportunity. Like we all need opportunity in life. You can train all you want. Somebody's going to give you an opportunity in any business and anywhere. Uh, and I saw a guy that was doing all the things. He just needed opportunity. And I had the hindsight of five years or so with him or more at that point. So. No. Yeah. As far as um, you know. Teach, I'm sure, you know, you seem smiling guys, I'm sure you enjoyed last night, but, you know, talking to him, it's just, okay, on to the next thing. Does that kind of explain some of his success, just the way he, he, he handles an event like that, that he just, you know, he just kind of moves on? Almost. Yep, it does. It, that's, that's uh, I think it's a good um, pickup by you, Bill, because I think that's a that's an incredibly uh, underappreciated tra- trait. You can't live in the past, and he, he scored six points, and that was yesterday. And in our business, specifically, it's no good anymore. So he, he, he takes that and uses, but he takes that experience, and it's, it's, it's helped him. It's elevated his self-expectation. It's elevated his confidence in his own ability. It's elevated our team's confidence in, in his ability, and on and on and on. So there's a lot of things that do, you know, there's a lot of benefit to that, uh, but you, you move on. And... Even when he scored his 30th last year, we had a quick uh, talk on the bench, and everybody was all excited. And I think probably the two people that were least excited were Tej and myself. And I, I leaned over to him and said, you, you and I both know there's a lot more than 30. Um, and and uh, that's just the way he processes. It's, it's the, and, and all the great athletes, I think, and goal scorers in this case, uh, their focus is on the next goal. That's what makes them great. Just the one goal. And and he just wants to score the next goal. And he, I don't think he's worried about 50 or 60 or 80 or 100. He just wants the next goal. And that ability to just stay focused on that um, is v- very challenging in this industry, in any industry, to stay in the moment. But he's pretty much in the moment. Yesterday was yesterday, and uh, he was out there today, dialed in. Yeah. Uh, the focus obviously is on him right now because of five goals. But when you look at that line, the way Skinner's creating goals with all the assists, Tuck is getting first line chances. What's the lesson that line can give your entire team? It's funny you say that because I think the Cousins line is actually giving them lessons too at the same time. So I think they're we have lines feeding off each other. I think uh, when we when Jost joined us, his veteran experience with uh, Gergensen's and Akposo gave us a pretty good jolt and it, it might have started there where we started to have more unity and uniform look with the with the forward lines so yes I think the Thompson line is definitely positively affecting other lines but at the same time Cousins line I mean was was that line inspired because Cousins was second star of the week this week um, probably influenced in some way in regard to that so we, the the competition amongst the group in a healthy manner uh, is elevated because we have, you know, those three lines specifically um, have been really good. Krebs comes back in the lineup, and obviously you guys see his standard is much higher for himself based on what he's watching. And he jumps on that ice, and he knows, boy, the standard's elevated. I need to elevate. And we, we, we saw that with him, and he, he looked great last night as well. So I think they're all feeding off of each other. Uh, is a much better, a more comfortable saying that than um, that it's one line leading the way. Tom, coached a lot of games and a lot of others. I mean, have you seen a performance like Tatum's at all in any way? Uh, yeah. yeah we, had a, we had a guy score five goals in a championship playoff uh, that was pretty amazing. But, yes, uh, you know, great athletes tend to do great things and, and – 
you know, it, it's funny. You probably flip on the sports tonight, and there'll be somebody doing something great because it's professional athletes. Um, so yeah, I, 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 you know, I don't want to diminish what Tage did by any means, um, but he's capable of it. Guys are capable of it, um, and you know, a lot of times lost are, are, are the guys uh, don't don't quite know what they're capable of. They know they're good. Uh, but they don't know that they can, you know, hold so many magic moments. And I think, um, you know, that's that's what's exciting about sports. Uh, so, yeah, I've been fortunate to be around lots of pretty darn exciting uh, things, and last night was another one of them. On the note of these guys feeding into each other and encouraging each other, you know, tough and skinny at career nights last night too, and obviously that's easy to come by when you're stacking up so many goals. But when it comes to a situation like this where these guys are feeding into each other and you're seeing things click on that level, is this a moment where, as a coach, you can kind of take maybe a step back in that sense and know that they're keeping the ball going? Or how do you enable that momentum to continue? Yeah, well, I told Nicole, Nicole as I walked in here today that I'm probably more ornery today than uh, than recently, just, just because you competitively uh, – I do love our synergy, I think – you know, a big consideration for me always in coaching is how, how do you create an environment where synergy takes place? And sometimes you just got to get out of the way as a coach. You have, you have a lot of authority as a coach, but that authority can really screw things up fast. Um, and there's times you get out of the way, and, and, and you have to get out of the way in order for synergy to be created. And that cannot happen if you don't have great leadership in the room and guys that take initiative and guys that – you know, care about their team and teammates and work. And, and so we have that um, part. I'm very comfortable in that. Now it's, and with that synergy comes confidence. Now you've had ability as a coach to maybe push harder where you couldn't push quite as hard prior. And, you know, that's how I feel with this group. This group is, is very, very capable of maybe more things than they can see, um, but they're not there. Uh, and, there's a long way to go. Um, again, we caught a team, my, my opinion, we caught a team last night that was vulnerable, and we took advantage of it, which is really good. Um, but the next night out, we play Pittsburgh tomorrow, and again on Saturday, and uh, they are a damn good hockey team, as we know. And all our fun from last night ended uh, right when that buzzer rang, and it's back to business. When it comes to Tage's size, usually those guys Or, see, or even watching back in the day, any player with that kind of size, that, with that kind of skill that played forward? Yeah, that's uh, – <laughs> I mean, he's, he's – the athletes are bigger and bigger today, obviously. Um, but that is – that's six foot seven. I don't think I've coached another guy six foot seven over the years. There's, um, there's not been too many of those guys in the NHL even, so I'd have to say no on that. <laughs> that's good i was struggling i had a couple in each pocket one in my hand and uh but i was i was wedging them in there um but uh it, it was uh it was awesome to see that uh like i said chris durkin had all five pucks already labeled after the game and uh um i don't know what we would have done if he got a six late but um but yeah no it was it was pretty neat pretty neat experience Deeper pie. Yeah, I don't think I'll be redoing my suits anymore for deeper pockets, but uh, but that was nice. So thank you guys. Thank you.